It's that time again. Let's chat about my monthly makes. Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts. Welcome. My channel is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. In this video, I'm going to share with you my May makes. I have 12 things to show you this month and then there was one more thing that I'm not going to show you just yet. It's a collab that I did with Andra of Andra Makes and you will be seeing that later this month. Andra and I decided to sew up a garment from a vintage pattern. We each chose what we wanted to sew and neither of us knows what the other one made. So you're just gonna have to tune in later in June to see what we did for our collab. But today I'm just gonna be sharing the 12 other things that I made in May with you. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I pretty much always dread filming these monthly makes videos because it literally takes me hours. I have so many different behind the scenes things that I have to do to prep for this video. But I have to say that this time around, I actually had a lot of fun with it. I had a fun putting together different outfits and coming up with styling ideas. And I think that means that I'm really happy with the majority of makes this month. So drop me a comment and let me know if you agree. So let's get started with tops. The first top that I made was Simplicity 9550. This is a new Mimi G pattern. It's a wardrobe pattern that has a top, a skirt, and a pair of shorts, but I just made the top. The fabric that I used is a rayon linen slub that I got from Stylemaker Fabrics, and I did make another piece in the same fabric for, so that I would have a matching set, and you'll be seeing that shortly. So I sewed View B that has the V back, but I did the gathered sleeves from View A. I sewed a size 6, so I did size down one size from the size I typically make in Big Four patterns because this has a lot of ease and I didn't want it to be too baggy, and I think that that was an okay decision. This pattern was very easy to sew. The neckline is finished with facings and you do actually top stitch the facing down so that it doesn't shift. Um, I really like that detail. I like the little tie and the V back. It's really cute and I find that I can wear a normal bra with straps with this top. The bra doesn't show, which is a really nice feature. I think this top is really cute and it goes with a lot of things in my wardrobe and I would consider sewing this pattern again but there is one thing that I don't like about it and that is the length of the top. It's definitely, I mean, this is most certainly a crop top. For me, it's a little bit short. I don't mind showing a little sliver of skin, but this is more than a sliver. I have more of my gut hanging out than I'm really comfortable with. So if I made it again, I would definitely lengthen this probably by about one and a half inches because the issue with this, and I think I show it in the clip um, when I'm modeling it, is that it's already really short and then because it has a grown on sleeve, um, that sleeve is like attached to the body in a way. So when you move your arms around, when you lift up your arms, it pulls the top up and that makes it even shorter. And I feel like I constantly need to like tug it back down. So it's not the most comfortable thing. I think that it would be better if it were just slightly longer. Um, I don't think that that would be as much of an issue. But other than that, I do think that it's really cute. It's very simple and quick to sew, even with this V-back detail. And if you did the version that just has the little keyhole neck that would be even simpler. Um, so I definitely would consider making another one of these, but in the future I would lengthen it. So for styling the crop top, I decided to pair it with my Sabina skirt from the Little Pomegranate. Um, when I shoot my videos, I usually have my dress form in the back and I try to put something on the dress form that sort of fits with the theme of what I'm filming. And I just happened to throw on when I was shooting my vacation capsule wardrobe, I threw on that crop top with the skirt just to have something in the background. And then I was like, wait, I actually really like that combination. So I decided to try it out in real life. And I do think that it's really cute. So I'm happy that I sort of accidentally happened upon that combination. I do think it's a good one. I like the way that the bright green looks with the blue. And um, I think you're gonna see a theme that I had talked about before that I've been really wanting, craving brighter colors in my wardrobe. And I think several of the pieces this month really reflect that. Next up, I have a couple of knitting makes to share with you. I made Camisole number no. five from My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I made it out of Volmiza sock in the colorway fuchsia that I had in my stash. I just used one skein of sock yarn and I actually had quite a bit left over because Volmiza comes in 150 gram skeins and I used less than 100 grams. So a very, very small amount of yarn. I think I made the smallest size and I used, yeah, I made size extra small and I used my Haya Haya bamboo interchangeables in size three, which is 3.25 millimeters. 
This was a really easy, quick top to make, and it has a few details that are actually really fun, like these edgings on the armholes and the neckline are done with double knitting. So it adds just a little bit of interest as far as the knitting goes, but it looks very chic and elegant and put together. I almost never repeat the same sweater pattern more than once, but I actually would consider making a few more of these just because it was so fast to knit. And I think that it's really cute. I love the style. For the styling, I paired it with my new paper cut tulip pants and you're going to see in a few moments. Ever since I made those pants and I made that bright pink top, I was just dying to put those two together. I just think that that bold pop of color with the contrast, it looks amazing. And I really like that combination. I will definitely be wearing that in real life. The final top is another knitted garment. This is the Costal Tank, and I forgot to write down who the designer is, but I'll put it up on the screen. This is made out of Hedgehog Fiber Sock Yarn in the colorway Film Noir, and again, it only used one skein, and I used my same Haya Haya number no. three uh, bamboo interchangeables. This is one that doesn't really look that great on the hanger. It has this like crisscross straps in the back and that's the main feature of it. The body of the tank is knit out of one by one half twisted rib. It's again, very, very easy to do, um, but it's really, really cute. And um, this is another one that I would consider making another one maybe in a solid. I just think that it looks really cute on and I love that cross back feature. For this video, I have styled it with my denim jean skirt that I got from Madewell, and I've paired it with my um, stripey espadrilles. I really like how the belt and the espadrilles picks up the black flecks in the top. I just think that this is so cute, and it's probably not one that I'm gonna wear on the hottest days of the year, but as long as it's in like the 70s or 80s, I think that I could get away with wearing this, and it is just so adorable. I'm really glad that I made it. Moving on to bottoms, I have the matching piece that goes with my crop top. I made a second pair of paper cut patterns to Le Pan. My first pair was from my April mix that I showed last month in the natural colored linen, and I loved those pants so much that I went ahead and made another pair out of this green rayon linen slub. This fabric is definitely a little bit thinner and it has more drape than my linen pair, and so it just hangs beautifully. I think that it works, this fabric works really well in this um, more wider leg style. For May, this pattern won the poll of people wanting to see a detailed review of this particular pattern. And I do just wanna tell you that that review is coming, but it's gonna take me a little while. I think I'm, it might not actually appear until July or August. I'll definitely do it before the end of summer. But the issue is that I've made two pairs of these pants and I really wanna make the shorts uh, and I don't know that I'm gonna have time to do it this month. So I do wanna make the shorts before I do the detailed review. So um, I hope that you can be patient with me. That review will be coming. And so because I'm gonna do an entire review on this, I'm not gonna go into the details of it right now. So one of the things that I absolutely love about these pants is that they go with so many things in my wardrobe, even though it's a bright color, I think that it works really, really well with a lot of the things that I have. I'm gonna put up the picture of the matching set so you can see what that looks like together. But then I also, obviously you saw it with the pink, um, camisole number five. And then for this outfit, I went with a monochrome look. I paired it with my True Bias Nico top in the green bamboo rib knit that's a little bit darker. And I love the way that this outfit looks. I also paired it with some green acrylic earrings and I will definitely be wearing this as an outfit um, in the future. I just think that it looks so chic with those different shades of green and I really love this outfit. So next up we have Simplicity 9549. I made the shorts. There are pants and a skirt and shorts and I made the shorts in a size 10. I used this Atelier Brunette fabric that's been in my stash for a little while. I think I got this from Style Maker. And there's definitely some things that I don't like about these. Some of it is the design and some of it is the fit and the fit part was totally my own fault, but we'll get to that. I feel duty bound to warn you that this pattern comes out really short. Now I'm only four foot nine and I have really short legs and so they're actually perfect for me. But I will say that once I did the cuff, um, I realized that the inseam on these is really quite short. So I feel like that's something that people would wanna know if you were making these. So these shorts have this cute double pocket feature, but in retrospect, I realized that I don't 
really like it that much because you make the two pockets and then you actually only stitch it down to the shorts on the shorter pocket and so like the bigger pocket is just kind of like flapping free and i definitely have found that once you wash it you definitely need to iron it and or steam it in order to get that to lay flat otherwise it kind of curls up and then of course the downside of doing that is that you're limited to your pocket size to the shorter pocket you're kind of like wasting all this space with the bigger pocket so if i had it to do over again honestly i would probably just just top stitch down the around the bigger pocket so that the actual pocket size would be larger um, that's just my opinion um, it's a cute design feature but I feel like it's a little bit wasteful of space almost and then the other change that I made was I had to top stitch down the entire cuff. You're only supposed to tack it at the sides, but because I used this really super drapey rayon, I had to top stitch on the cuff, otherwise it just completely like drooped and fell over and it looked really bad. So um, I stitched it down so that it won't move. Now the fitting issues that I had with these, like I said, they were entirely my fault. So I went ahead and did what I always do, which is I extended the crotch point on the front and the back in order to give room for my thighs, and that went just fine. But I forgot to check the rise to make sure that it actually hit me both in the front and back where my, my actual waistline is. So it ended up being uneven where the front rise is longer on me than the back rise is, and so that ends up causing droopy front crotch because the fabric wants to like, it's not quite long enough in the back and so it kind of like pulls up a little bit and almost gives me a wedgie. And then there's too much fabric in the front so that fabric kind of pulls at the crotch and it just doesn't look very good. Um, it was definitely a fixable mistake that I just wasn't even thinking about. But I did learn my lesson on this and I'm mindful from here on out, every single pair of pants that I make, that I need to check those crotch lengths or the crotch depths rather to make sure that it's hitting me in the right spot so that it'll sit evenly on my body and I won't get either a wedgie or the droopy crotch. I wanted to style these in a little bit more of an elegant way, so I paired these shorts with my button-up Cameron shirt that from Helen's Closet in a white shirting fabric, and I tied it at the waist, and I think that it looks really cute. I, um, it, it, the droopy crotch thing does bother me, it's like the only thing that I can see, but if I can look past that, I do think that it's a cute pair of shorts. I will still wear them, but they're just not gonna be a favorite, I don't think. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that the pattern wants you to make separate channels for the elastic and then feed in like a million pieces of 3 8 inch elastic. I hate doing that. I hate it with the fire of a thousand suns. So I just did one piece of two inch elastic and then I top stitched it down to form those little lines. And I think that it basically looks the same and it's like a million times easier to execute. So I would highly recommend doing that if you make these shorts. Next up, we have McCall's 2255. This is a vintage pattern from 1999, and I made a bias cut slip skirt with an elastic waist. I made the size 10, and I shortened the pattern by three inches to make it hit me just below the knee. The fabric that I used was a rayon twill that I got from StyleMaker Fabrics, and I had two yards of it, and I only used about one, so I think I might still have enough left that I could squeeze out a matching top at some point. Now, I can't really testify to the quality of the instructions because I didn't follow them at all. I just, I mean, it's a two-piece skirt. I don't really need directions for that. So I did do French seams on this so that the seamings were enclosed because it is on the bias and I didn't want them to stretch out. So I think that's a really lovely finish. I used three quarter elastic and the waistline. And this skirt, I don't know if it's because it's cut on the bias, but there's something magic about the skirt because I measured it before I made it to make sure that I was doing the correct size. And the size at the waist is smaller than my hip size, but somehow I can still get it on and off with no problem. And I don't know why that is. It might be because of the bias cut. If you have any ideas, please let me know. But I just, I don't know how that works, but somehow it does. So I did let this skirt hang for um, a few days before I hemmed it. I've kind of happened along this system that works pretty well for me. Whenever I have a skirt or a dress that needs to hang for a few days, I will construct the whole thing except for the hem, put it on my dress form and let it hang. And then I make another project that's similar to this one so that I can use the same needles and the same serger thread. I don't have to like switch things out. And then when I finish my next project, then I'll go back to this one 
and you know usually it's a couple days later and then I can even out the hem and um, finish it up so that system is working really well for me in order to even this one out because it's a shorter skirt I just laid it flat on a table and used a tape measure to ensure that I was doing the exact same amount of fabric all the way around and then just trimmed off the excess it was very simple to do and I really love the way that this looks it just drapes so beautifully on the body um, I think it's gonna go with a lot of things in my closet and I will definitely be making more of these skirts. There's a couple different versions. There's a longer like midi length skirt that has a slit. I really wanna make that one too. And this is just so simple and easy to put together. The bias does make it a little bit tricky, but it's definitely doable. And I'm really happy that I made this and added it to my collection. Now for the outfit for this one, I paired it with my Jennifer Lauren handmade linen hunter tank. It has a little tie at the front. I think it's really cute. The one thing I will say about this skirt is because it is like, uh, it's made out of rayon and it's pretty close fitting in the waist. It's not really one where you can tuck your top in. It doesn't look that good. So I think that I will always end up like tying at the waist or wearing like a cropped top, something that I can do so that I don't have to tuck my shirt in. Um, but otherwise I just think it's a really cute piece. And I even think I could wear this in the fall and possibly winter with like a sweater and tights. Um, so yeah, I really love this skirt. If you're enjoying my makes video, I would really love it if you would give me a thumbs up because it helps more people find my channel. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Now let's move on to some charity dresses. So fair warning, my husband just came home from his trip, so there might be some chaos going on in the background, but I am just going to do my best to power through. Okay, let's talk about some charity dresses. Madi of Madi Sews hosts Project Dress a Girl. I think she's gonna do it again this year in September. And I made a pledge that I wanna make one dress a month for the, the charity, so I'm not trying to do all my dresses all in one month. And it, But I've actually found that it makes more sense for me to do them in batches rather than just doing one at a time. I just feel like it's more efficient. So this month I sewed up three dresses and that should cover me through the month of June. So I used the pattern Simplicity 9120 and I made the size 6 for all three dresses. And each one of these uses a quilting cotton that was in my stash. Um, usually I had about one and a half yards and that was enough to make this dress. I did print out a downloadable inseam pocket so that I could add pockets to these dresses. And um, I also changed up the back that it's supposed to have a button closure, but the charity doesn't want you to use buttons. And so I replaced that with a tie instead. And the other thing is I didn't add interfacing to the facings on this because I just didn't really feel like it needed it. But yeah, these are all really simple dresses to put together. Um, I think that the prints are super cute. One thing that I honestly just didn't even think about until it was too late is that this white dress, might, I'm worried that it might be a little bit too sheer. Um, but hopefully it's not it is a fairly thick cotton but it's something that i will be mindful of in the future not to use colors that are too light but i do think that these are really adorable prints and i'm hoping that um, a little girl somewhere will really love it the last section i have to talk about are jumpsuits and overalls so the first one i want to share is the deer and doe sirocco jumpsuit i did an entire review on this because i made this as a collab with Teresa from lost my thread and emma of so do it emma so i will link that review and then down in the description box in case you want to go check out the details i'm not going to go into that right now i used a ponty fabric from joanne but i did want to give you a little bit of an update so when i filmed the review i had not yet worn this for my work event that I had. I had a conference that I was working all weekend long. And so I did end up wearing it to that event and it held up pretty well. It, it is still a little bit hard to get on and off, but it was doable. The waistline actually didn't feel tight on me. Um, it wasn't uncomfortable at all. I do still think I would size up in the waist if I were gonna make it again, but like just wearing this one, it really wasn't too bad. The one thing that I was not anticipating was that that day when I wore it, it was almost 90 degrees out. And so this was really hot. Um, this is a thick Ponty. I don't think it's a good summer weight fabric. I think that this is much more appropriate for like a spring or fall garment because of the thickness of the fabric. So it was just something that I didn't really anticipate, but yeah, it was really, really hot wearing this. Um, so yeah, that's just my little update. But I do think I'm gonna keep this in my closet and I think I'll get a lot of wear out of it when the weather is cooler. Maybe not so much in the summer though. I did go ahead and film a quick clip of me wearing this in another casual way. I paired it with my new Converse high tops, their platform shoes. I think that it's really cute and it's just another way to dress down the jumpsuit and make it more casual.
The next make I have to share is the McCall's 8204 overalls. I used this leopard print denim that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I had purchased two yards of this to make an overalls dress, but then I decided to make the short overalls version of this. I decided to try this rather than doing the full length overalls with my denim because um, I figured the shorts version would be more practical for summer and I really wanted to try out this pattern first out of something that I wasn't that attached to fabric wise because um, I wasn't sure I was gonna like this style. So for sizing, I chose the size small and I did make some adjustments to the pants in order to get them to fit me. Originally, I had cut out all of the pockets. You can have pockets on the front. There's a, I can't even see it. There's like a bib pocket up here, which I did attach. And then you can put back pockets on, but I ended up leaving those off because once I had stitched on the front pocket, um, I realized that you can't even see it, like there's no point. So I just left off the back pockets. It does have side seam pockets here, so it's nice to have those. And then the shorts are fairly short, but they're just right for me, I would say. And then instead of using grommets, I just did a buttonhole for the strap because I didn't want to have to order any hardware and wait for it to come. And this is sort of an experimental thing. So I just went ahead and did a buttonhole instead. So I did wear these one day. I think I filmed a little clip of it with just a ready to wear um, black knit camisole underneath. I do need to get some different um, types of tops to wear with the style overall. So I don't really have a lot that I think is appropriate. So I really like the style of these, but there is one thing about it that really bugs me, and that is that the straps keep wanting to fall off. I just kept tightening the straps and tightening them and tightening them almost to the point where I was giving myself a wedgie. Obviously that was too tight, so I loosened them up a little bit, but it didn't matter how tight I made the straps, they always wanted to fall off my shoulders. And I do think that that is because of a design flaw in these overalls. So both the front bib and the back bib are really wide and most overall styles that I've seen taper more in the back so that the straps are closer into the body and also in the front too. I do think that they're set out really wide. So I think that's why I can't keep the straps on my shoulders because there's just too much fabric here. Um, there is some gaping in the back as well that I can see that there's a little bit too much fabric in the back and it's making it sit too wide on my shoulders. So for that reason, I'm not gonna make this pattern again. And in fact, I don't think I'm gonna wear these overalls again because the strap thing was just driving me bonkers. So what I think I might actually do with this is just cut off the bib. And then I do have a little bit of this fabric left that I could make a, a waistband piece and then just put in an elastic waistband. The only reason I haven't done it yet is because this fabric, this denim, it's not like a super heavy denim, but it is a little bit heavier. Um, so I'm concerned if I do an elastic waistband that it might be too thick. Um, so I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet, but I do think I'd be better off uh, transforming these into shorts because I'm just not going to wear them the way that they are. So I have a question for you guys. I would really appreciate your advice. Um, after having tried this style, I do really like it and I still want to make those long um, denim overalls in this style, but I need a different pattern. So the patterns that I'm aware of, I've heard of the Waves and Wild Haiti dungarees and the Tilly and the Buttons Aaron dungarees. And I know there's probably some others out there. Please let, let me know if you've made either of those patterns or another pattern that looks similar, your experience with the fit of it and whether it's um, drafted better to sit on the, the shoulders a little bit closer um, so that the straps won't fall off. If you have any advice for me, I would love to hear from you because I do really, really want to make another pair of these that actually I can wear without driving me nuts. So um, yeah, I could really use your advice. So the last garment that I have to share with you is my favorite. I made the Simplicity 9125 jumpsuit. This is a pattern that's been in my stash for a while and quite honestly, I'd sort of forgotten about it for a little while, but I dug it back out because I had three yards of this beautiful Cloud9 rayon and I had bought this to make a dress. But in the spirit of not repeating myself, I decided that I really didn't need a dress out of this sort of navy background ditzy floral because I have a number of dresses that are similar to that and I just didn't need another one. But this fabric deserved to be made into something really special and really beautiful. And then I was looking through my pattern stash and I came across this jumpsuit and I just think that it's so light and so cool and I love the style of it. It has this sort of halter neckline. Oh, there's a little thread that I need to trim. Um, that has a drawstring here, so you can pull it tight and tie it into a bow. 
Um, it works perfectly well with a strapless bra, or you could even go braless if it's just really hot and I'm not going anywhere. The pants are um, a fairly loose, relaxed fit, and they have a tapered leg. So I did something a little bit weird with the sizing on this one. When I looked at the finished garment measurements, I really needed a size that was in between the extra, extra small and the extra small. So what I did was I split the difference in between those two lines and I just made a new line that was sort of like a half size. So it was a little bit strange, but it did work out. So I ended up shortening the legs by about six inches. That's a pretty normal adjustment for me. And there is bias binding on the armholes, and so I used a contrast uh, quilting cotton for the binding just so that it would be a little bit more stable. So the way that this um, jumpsuit is held together is that it uses 3 8 inch elastic in the waistline, and that is the one thing that I don't like. I feel like the 3 8 inch elastic isn't strong enough to really hold up the jumpsuit. So it is meant to be like kind of blousy, but because that elastic is so thin, it wants to just kind of fall down my body instead of staying on my waist. So um, I don't really like that. If I were to do this over again, or if I made another version, I would definitely lengthen the bodice and the top of the pants in, so that I could use a thicker elastic. I think that a one inch elastic would be a much better uh, solution for me. It would stay better at the waist. But other than that, I, that's the only thing that I don't like about this. It does have inseam pockets, which is really great. And I actually got a compliment on Instagram from the designer of the fabric that she said that this was one of the, her favorite garments that she'd ever seen made out of her fabric. And I was just so touched by that. Um, I think that this is so cute and so chic. I think I'm really gonna enjoy wearing it in the summertime. And I might even consider possibly layering it in the fall like over a turtleneck. But yeah, I really love this fabric and I'm so glad that I found something to do it justice. I also just really like the pattern. There's another different type of bodice in the same pattern that has like a crossover back, um, like a little wrap back and it has a V in the front. I really wanna try that style as well and I really wanna make the romper so I might be revisiting this pattern again at some point. So those are all of the garments that I completed in the month of May. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I kind of feel like they were all my favorite although I did just say the jumpsuit was my favorite but I really thought I had a great month for makes. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like this one, I'm going to link to my April mix. You can check that out in case you missed it. I'll see you next time.